tight ends. Yes. We love talking about some tight ends. Right, Scotty? Where's football wife? Where's football wife when you need her? By the way, football wife's been gone for a while. Where has she been? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think about her a lot. Like, does she think about us? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I think... We're That's in... mostly what I think about. Like, in... when I'm thinking about her, I'm like, is she thinking about us, too? I mean, we have an official countdown with her name on it. I mean, she's yeah. kind of a big deal. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> tight ends. Tight talking some tight ends. We love some tight ends. And yeah, There's uh... one obvious one here, and it's Blake Bell. <laughs> You're, that's so mm. wrong. That's Noah Gray. And I don't even know. Uh, well, now you're banned. Now you're banned. Um, all right. So there's let's let's dive in. There's not a lot here, so we're gonna kind of break this down for you guys. Uh, number one, first and foremost. I mean, do we need to really question what we have here? It's Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. And Scotty, and he's if, if anyone if anyone was doubting that he you know he's not going to show up this year, he he he's rocking the mustache in camp right now, Chris. That means he's ready. Travis, he's, he is ready, guys. Travis Kelsey is no joke, and he's a guy that you can realistically take in the top end of your round one and feel great about. Um, the difference between first and second tight end, uh, tight end one was fifteen touchdowns. That's the same gap as second and 22nd, Scotty. Uh, he never misses games. He's never hurt. I think he finished 90 points better in a half point PPR league, uh, PPR leagues than any other second tier tight end two. Tight end two. Yeah. Like he yeah. is absolutely dominant. And he's a guy that you, if you have him on your team, you set it and you forget it. You never have to worry about a side of a bye week taking him out of your lineup. And he's like a good night's sleep, just like a top quarterback. So he's by far large the number one. I don't need really need to think we need to spend a ton of time on him because we already know what we're getting. But, Scott, anything to add on Kelsey? No. Do you remember two years ago how I preached this to people? I'm like, yeah. my biggest key in the you sold first me on it. Draft, <laughs> draft was like – the difference in the consistency of Travis Kelsey uh, as the number one fantasy tight end and the difference between one and two a lot of times is so monumental that it makes it so worth it to take him high in the draft. And oh, yeah. obviously we're now, I mean, my only, the, the big concern there is like, he's not getting any younger. Um, we haven't seen a drop off yet, but you know, sometimes those things can happen quickly. I'm praying that doesn't occur this year and that he stays healthy again and continues on. And obviously he's the clear number one option in Kansas city. Like we just talked about. So yeah, he's tight in one he's tier one. He there, he's in a tier by himself yeah, more than be. any other position in fantasy football. He's in a tier by himself. I mean him, sure. him and, and Justin Jefferson, I feel like, like when it comes to like, the talent. I mean, wide receivers is more. You got you got some of the. I still think Jamar Chase. Jamar is like Chase right is right there, there too. Yeah, yeah. Ty, I think Tyreek could if, if Tua stays healthy. I think Tyreek might finish. Why? It, it, not surprising at all if he finishes wide receiver one this year. Yeah, and like it's weird because he's so good. He's in t- tier one. You almost like have to put like Mark Andrews is up there. He, I mean, I feel like Mark Andrews is kind of in a tier of his own since he put. Kelsey in a tier of his own because like if there's a drop off yeah. for Mark Andrews there after that because last few years Mark Andrews has been very productive I mean the the Baltimore offense uh, relies heavily on tight ends last few years he's been tight end three tight end one tight end four tight end four and he gets a ton of volume like he basically sees a quarter of the targets from the Ravens he's essentially a wide receiver if with 53 percent of his slot rates happening uh, in each of those games and then he doesn't block that much really like he's mainly just a wide receiver, uh, so you kind of got to put a lot of little, little more stock into the fact that Mark Andrews is going to be a guy that you can lean on. Not as he's not going to get the production probably as as Kelsey, but he almost outside. But like behind him, it's hard to tell from a separation of the guys below him, and it, he's like on an island between tier one and tier three. Yeah, no, I agree. He's kind of in his own tier as well at tier two. Uh, when he was fully healthy two seasons ago, he was tight end one, actually. Um, in half point PPR, had a, a phenomenal year. 
last year he didn't miss a ton of time with his injury but he was clearly hurt the, the back half of the year and then you compound that with lamar not playing and his his stats in the second half were awful actually but i mean he had some monster games of 20 plus fantasy points um in that you know his first five games or first six games i think he had like f- four of those games he had 20 plus fantasy points in so obviously mark andrews is 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 number two i know i don't know anyone that would debate that and then then we get then into get like tier the world of like <laughs> mid these are the like, these are the guys that i classify as won't win your league but they won't lose it for you either <laughs> like it's just kind of like they're, they're they're good they're fine uh what's up mike how we doing buddy uh good to have you in who's your team and where you're from like to get to know you we're doing some tight end rankings uh here and or some tiers and then we're also um getting into some more fantasy stuff coming up here uh this wednesday so uh love to have you as a part of that we have our discord we have our all of our cool things that we have going on so good to have you in um but let us know who your team is and where you're from um Cowboys from New York. That must be a tough one for you. That's that got to be tough for you. <laughs> like, I mean, there's a lot of Cowboys fans out there. There are so a lot of Cowboys fans. Sure. But, hey, welcome in. in. In New York. Yeah, welcome yeah. in, Cowboys. All right. Is this their year, Mike? Are they going to get past uh, those first couple playoff rounds this year? Are they going to make it? Let us know. Um the but, answer is clearly yes. We'll clearly, clearly have a, we clearly have a Chiefs Cowboys Super Bowl in our hands. A hundred percent. So, yes. good news for Mike: we have a Cowboy specific email that you can spam. Yeah. No, oh, don't no, spam it! Don't no. spam it! No, you don't need to do no. that. Um, <laughs> Raven, uh, let's see. Um, Ravens hired Tom Monkin to be the OC. Knowing him from what he did at Georgia and the Tampa Ravens, will throw the ball more. And Munkin loves to target the tight end also. Yeah, which is more more fire for Mark Andrews to be in his own tier at tier two. Um, number t- uh, So tier three, again, won't win you your league, but won't lose it for you either. These are the TJ Hawkinsons, Kittles, and Goddards of the world. Um, Kyle Pitts is a little bit lower. We'll get to him in a minute. But I think Hawkinson is an interesting one here. Um, Hawkinson is a guy that I'm considering a little bit more. Um, basically, hey, Mike. Mike, 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 Welcome in, Mike. Good to have you as a part of our family. Uh, thank you, thank you for that follow, guys. Hit that follow button if you're new to the channel, just like Mike. Um, just like Mike. Uh, TJ. TJ Hawkinson, he was basically a number two behind Kelsey after being traded to Minnesota. He played well in the playoffs. He's still super young. All the attention is on Justin Jefferson in that offense. And Vikings are always throwing the ball. Their third most, uh, their third most throw throws uh, by any team last year. Um, and they don't have Dalvin Cook anymore. So no Cook. They throw the ball third most in the league. And Jefferson draws a lot of attention. And TJ Hawkinson is a really, really solid target, especially in the red zone. I mean, I don't think there's a lot to hate here. Um, now, um, I hate him. Yeah, you hate him. I, I don't hate him as no, much. No, as, no, I, I hate him. No, not as a, like a player. I hate him in fantasy. You hate him. In, why do you hate him in fantasy? You would have him lower, lower tier in fantasy? I wouldn't. I mean... May, listen, maybe they make a connection in the offseason. I disagree. He didn't play, didn't put up numbers in uh, Minnesota once he was traded. Uh, you think Kirk would rely on a guy like that? Didn't really happen outside of Chris. He had a 29.4, and this is half point PPR again, uh, 29.4 point game towards the end of the year with Minnesota. Outside of that, his next highest game in half point PPR last year with Minnesota was 12.8. That was his second best game. But I mean, he didn't put up numbers. And in fact, with with Detroit before that, he had a monster game in week four where he put up like 36. And in in every other game, he didn't reach double figures. How can you rely on a guy like that? I mean, he had two monster games last year where he had 36 and 30, basically. And in every other game, he didn't eclipse 12.8. 
I mean, in the postseason, he had what ten receptions for eleven and on eleven targets for 129 yards. I mean, again, getting into a new right. offense with the Boom. Vikings at the Boomer very like bust. well, boomer bust. But I think still there's something to like the him. point of of what the vol the pure volume itself with a team that throws the ball as much as they do, like. A full I mean, off season, a full off season with, you think, with that, yeah, I of mean, building that chemistry up, and a full off season of you know getting plays under their belt with him. I don't know. I just think that there's a little bit more upside than there is with some of the guys below him. No I, running. I mean, the running game is. I mean, again, Jamar Chase I on the court. Uh, I mean, just Madison, whatever. Um, or, they drafted Jordan Addison in, in the first round. You have Justin Jefferson. They picked up in Keel Harry, which uh, that, that's knows, a nothing like, burger. May may or may not be. Uh, also, Jalen Rager, probably another enough nothing nothing burger. But Jalen Rager was on the former, team last. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was on the team last year. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they traded for him last year. So, but they did draft a guy in the first round of wide receiver to go along with your number one overall pick in at the wide in the whole draft. And Justin Jefferson, mm-hmm. and while Kirk Cousins is a very solid quarterback, he's not the guy. He's not going to throw for five thousand yards, Chris, and and forty touchdowns. He's not that dude. Well, he's not that dude, but he's. I mean, they still have a high volume of so, throwing the ball. I mean, they've established that last season. So I don't know. I mean, I think that the again tight ends after you get past those top two, you're kind of like these guys are going to be like so so right. They're going to be. I mean, any of these guys, Kittle. Like if we're we're going down the line here. Kittle is one of those guys that I'm not super excited about, but you have to draft him, right? But like, if I'm not if I'm not taking one of those top two guys, I am waiting. You're till waiting around eight, yeah, nine, hundred percent. Take, take a tight end, a hundred percent, because all at that point they all kind of average out, right? It, it all averages to to being a nothing burger uh, in the grand scheme of the difference between uh, everybody else that's taken. So like Kittle doesn't excite me at all. There's too many. He's a he's a he gets high target share. Uh, does doesn't always have a high target share. I'm sorry, um, because of all the options there. He had 11 touchdowns, but those were all at the end of the season. Uh, he had six touchdowns the previous year, by the way. Um, not great, but all those stats down the line were from Purdy when you know he revived kind of the season for George Kittle. Um, some of those games, Debo Samuel was out when Debo Samuel's healthy. Obviously, that doesn't that that cuts into the volume a little bit, um, and I just don't know if I want to hitch my wagon to a guy like Kittle. I've done that too many times. He's given me the ick. I, I'm not in on Kittle, like so. But he's he's here in tier three along with T.J. Hawkinson. Then you have Dallas Goddard. I think Dallas Goddard's kind of in this kind of situation here. You kind of know what you're getting. Like he's a kind of guy that he, he he's gonna get you a solid like 50, 60 yards per game on like. Eight, six, seven targets, maybe. Uh, like you're gonna, you know what you're yeah. getting. It's not gonna be great, but at the same time, the problem is like Hertz. Hertz isn't gonna throw for 300 yards a game. No. He's throwing, and you have AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. So there's just a lot of. But the issue is a lot to go around. I love Dallas Carter as a tight end, talent wise, but there's just a lot of no talent no. to go around there at weapons in Philly. Think about this. Uh, medics like uh, I like Goddard and Waller over Hawkinson. Well, Goddard only got think about this. He's only had eight end zone targets in the last uh, I think three years or something crazy um, and only nine targets inside the 10 yard line in the last three years. It's an AJ Brown, Jalen Hurts and running back game. Um, like when it comes to like goal line inside the 10, like they use those guys more than they do Goddard. So like that, that worries me, like the targets inside the red zone, inside the 10 yard line. So, um, he doesn't get many touches, but he makes the most out of them. Like when it comes to like moving the ball down the field, but then you don't target him in the end zone. So that's what worries me about him. He misses a lot of games. Um, I just. I think he worries me more so than anything else. And again, this is tier three. These, this is why you wait, guys. This is why you take like a tight end, either your your top one or two tight ends at the top of the draft, or you wait. You wait till the yeah. very end. That's it. Take Taysom Hill and hope he <laughs> plays, runs the ball for touchdowns. Uh, yeah, I just I worry. Um, and then you got 
you get down to the lower ends, uh, you get the like the Wallers, the the Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is another one. Interesting. We'll see. It, he was kind of a guy that we talked about on our buy the dip on Kyle Pitts. His stock after this is an all time low. He's no one's really considering because they got burned on him so much. Um, but he's a, he's a tier three here for us, just based off of speculation and buying the dip. Uh, had an absolutely brutal year last year. Tore his MCL before uh, as well. So um, they targeted him a lot, though. Like Mariota, by the way, people, you know, he wasn't the most accurate quarterback. So, you know, uncatchable balls, all these things that, you know, went into Kyle Pitts not having a great year as well. He had a thousand yard season as a rookie. Like people forget that. And he could be, we're kind of like going back on that with the changes of what, you know, we have with Desmond Ritter and some of these other new things they got going on in the offense there uh, with the running game and some of the other good receivers they they can, you know, put together. But I just, I think Kyle Pitts is a buy stock low still. Uh, that doesn't I mean, mean I feel the talents there. I, I feel and I think Ritter's a better option for him. Correct. Chris, I, I said it in what people mostly thought was just with Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill was tight end five last year. <laughs> it's, that's what we're talking about. Taysom Hill. And, he, like, and no one's going to draft him. Like you can get him probably whenever you want in the draft or maybe uh, probably on the free agent wire if you want like no one's going to touch T- Taysom Hill but he was tight end five last year that's how bad the tight ends are like Chris I remember I was high on Cole Komet last year and I felt like he had the worst year like he sucked and then they gave him this big contract in the offseason yeah he was he was tied in seven, and I felt like he was dog shit. <laughs> it, it feels if you don't have a Kelsey or if you don't have like a Mark it's Andrews, just a monumental difference. Like I feel that way about Kittle when I drafted Kittle. Like he was an awful like until those last six weeks, he was awful, and I'm already out of the playoffs at that point. So it's like <laughs> at that point, I'm like, all right, I'm too far out of the out of the hunt to even benefit from all the great uh, uh, you know end of the season kittle points that it, it was it's just that's how erratic it is so that's why it's like unless you're getting those top two guys don't over commit don't overdraft any tight ends um in your drafts because unless the, unless it's it's a name of kelsey or mark andrews and By even the way, then mark you, andrews a, is a guy you can get off free agency listen i not that I don't like Dalton Schultz's game because he was really good, but like Dak's gonna throw to the tight end. Dak loves tight ends. He's gonna throw to the tight end yeah. whether it's Dalton Schultz or someone else. So the fact that um, Jake Ferguson is like not getting drafted is wild to me at a tight end position that isn't clearly very deep. You get the number one tight end in Dallas. He's gonna get the ball. He's going to get the ball quite a bit. And I don't know that there's a huge drop off from Jake Ferguson and Dalton Schultz, quite frankly. Brian, what's going on, Brian? Welcome in. Brian, who's your team and where are you from? We like to get to know you a little bit. Welcome to the Action Lab family. Uh, Talking some fantasy here. And we're going to be doing this each and every single week leading up to the NFL season and during the NFL season. So make sure you uh, tune in. Uh, But yeah, who's your teams? A lot of a lot of people, a lot of love out there for an unproven tight end here in Denver. Chris Dolchich, Dolchich, Greg Dolchich. He's had a lot of love in fantasy corners. Thinking, and I get it. I I think he has some ability. My only concern is, you know how Lamar loves to throw the middle of the field. Yeah, you know who doesn't like to Russ Russ, doesn't throw the middle of the field can't throw he's the opposite of lamar jackson he can't see over the line so he can't throw to the middle of the field he likes to turn his wide receivers that's why like tyler lockett was so successful and things like that in seattle not that he wasn't last year too but like still uh but i like the talent of dolchich i i I like dolchich too i think even like there's some bright spots with dolchich and how he can stretch the field because he was the only guy at the end of last season that was able to stretch the field at only guy um, which is which is crazy to me, and that's the thing that I think that Sean Payton will kind of capitalize on. 
I always get hesitant, but up, up leading up to this point, we've gotten so excited about tight ends in Denver each and every single year, and they've always kind of like had a one-year wonder where they're kind of average at best, and then they kind of fade away, i.e. Albert O, i.e. some of the guys... Well, who we sent, what's his name, out to Seattle. Um, and it's just like... Fant, Noah Fant. Noah Fant. We were hyped about him, and we were First like, oh, pick, he's yeah. our future, and this and that. He's gone. Re- like, I... I, I I always, as a Denver Bronco fan, hate to jump and jump on a bandwagon of a tight end way too early because of how much we cycle through them th- as fast as we do. But that being said, I feel strong more strongly about Dolchis than I do um, as far as like stretching the field, being a wide receiver type option than a lot of the guys that we've had. So that yeah. feels better. That feels uh, better. Sergeant Erector. Erecto, Erectro. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Erecto. I got it eventually. Don't worry it, about it. We're getting uh, after dark here, real quick. Can Kincaid be as effective as Pitts were here? Dalton Kincaid in Buffalo. I mean, I've heard reports that they love code yellow him. spam code. Yeah. yellow. spam code yellow as Chris takes a break. I've heard reports out of camp there that they love Kincaid's ability. They, I've heard the comps to Travis Kelsey. Um, and, and Kincaid, you know, I think has some ability. Like, my question is, like, and obviously Buffalo is going to throw the ball a lot, and they're going to have a lot of passing yards. But how many people eat? Like, Dawson Knox is still going to be out there. I think he's still a pretty damn solid player. Are you going to? How often are you playing two tight end sets um, with Kincaid and Knox out there, along with uh, Diggs and Davis, like? A lot of eating out there, too. He's a rookie. Could he blow up? He absolutely could. He absolutely could. Um, And I don't hate taking a flyer on Kincaid at all. But he could also just kind of be a nothing burger. Down the road, I think he's going to be a very, very solid tight end in this league. Whether that happens as rookie or not, we'll see. We'll see. Um. SCG Kincaid is hand selected by Josh Allen. I think he'd have the produ- production to uh, Mike. No other tight end can do it. Kelsey does so for you. I mean, Kelsey's by far the greatest route runner tight end in the history of that position. It's not, it's not close. He's so good at running routes. And then you have, you know, the connection and timing and just ability that Mahomes and Kelsey have a, as a connection as well. On top of that, Lends to him, yeah, being phenomenal. Um, but Kincaid, Kincaid, I like a lot. He he was one of, as far as a pass catcher in this tight end draft, that was a pretty damn good tight end draft. He was my second favorite, actually. I liked um, I liked Luke Musgrave a lot out of Oregon State, uh, who got hurt a lot. But um, he actually reminded me a little more of Kelsey, but he's now in Green Bay. We'll see if he utilizes. He's get he gets utilized a lot in an offense that clearly isn't as good as Buffalo's. But um, I like Kincaid. I just don't know. It, it's it's a more a matter of when for him, not if for him being a elite fantasy production at the tight end position. Uh, should I draft uh, Kelsey Mahomes duo in my draft? If you can, I mean, do it. <laughs> you're literally you could have a QB one and tight end one. That's you, not a bad situation, Scotty. He um, would be. I mean, Mike would be sleeping good every single night, getting a good night's sleep. <laughs> WWD is that double dipping? A lot of people like the strategy of double dipping. Um, you know, they, and. Yeah, you're going to have some boom or bust, but with those two guys, I don't think there's a lot of boom or bust there. It's usually, I mean, Ma- they're down, their down games are, are not exactly a bust. Let, let's just put it this way, uh, guys. I mean, Mahomes puts up, what, 23, 24 points a game, fantasy-wise, which is, like, like I said, I, I mentioned this on a previous show as well when it comes to just getting a good night's sleep. It's You just don't have to worry about it, but it's like there's only a two or three quarterbacks that put up that kind of number, and then there's a drop off of like three to four, maybe five, on average points. I mean, that's almost a flex spot. That's a flex spot and a quarterback in one position. And you could also say the same thing about tight end. So I mean, you could have 
almost like three or four, three spots in two players practically um, with just drafting those two guys. And yeah. that, that's well, wild to think about. Last year we talked, or we talked about the separation between Kelsey and tight end two last year being almost, it was what, 90 points and half point PPR. Yep. Last year, Mahomes to QB five was 114. <laughs> it's crazy. Bruh. The difference between it's him wild. and QB five it's was 115 points. So yeah. that's what that's you get those two. You should be, I mean, yeah, obviously might be hurting at some other spots at running back and wide receiver, but you know you're getting production at those two positions every week. Yeah, and then also wide receivers a little deeper. You can kind of get some players and you know some value there if you're going with these two at the top of your draft. And then you could also, I mean, running backs are after those first you know couple tiers, it's kind of hit and miss. So uh, yeah, I think you if you have two guaranteed spots that are going to give put up and salvage some of your other positions that you're maybe lacking a little bit. It'll all balance out, but at least you know you're going to have production and consistency. And and by far on the offensive side, you know, in fantasy, running back's the most injured position as far as injuries and stuff like that, where you can all of a sudden pick up some off waivers that now is going to get a lot of touches that due to injury where you can't necessarily have, you know, at quarterback, even if the quarterback, the starter gets injured, you're not necessarily picking up the backup because he might be, well, he's a backup, so you're not you're not doing that, so... Um, and there's not as many injuries at the wide receiver tight end position that there are at running back. So, uh, I, I mean, I think we both agree strategy wise, like I'm not, I'm not in a hurry to grab running backs this year in fantasy. And obviously there's been years where like, that was the strategy you take running back one, two, one and two, yep. and then <laughs> figure everything out from there. That's so completely obviously shifted. things have changed. Correct. And it's again, um, it depends on where you draft. It depends on, you know, how many teams and where you are position wise. So, um, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but overall the strategy of drafting your go-to positions as your running backs is gone. I mean, you, you're, you're trying to find the value from a running back as opposed to kind of like what you did wide receivers back in the day. You, you, it's like, all right, you could wait on wide receivers. You get some, hopefully some value because you know that it, it's impossible to pass on those top running backs completely flipped um if you can forego running back and wide receiver spot as long as you have at least one decent running back and receiver uh if you can take Mahomes and kelsey uh point production is key and consistency is huge if you have those you win your league i went 14 and one in my money league last year congrats congrats gibby that's pretty solid nice took it down 14 and one i mean that's that's dominating. You don't see that record in fantasy no. ever. 14 and 1. Medic must maybe. have had some uh consistent performers <laughs> as you talk about. I agree. Consistency is huge. Um the boomer bust might win you some games, but it'll lose you a lot of games as well. True. True. So there you have it, guys. Those are our tight end and running back ranks of this week. Now, with this Wednesday, we're going to be diving into a lot of the divisional previews. Uh, now that we're getting through a lot of the training camps and we're getting some preseason games uh, here coming up, we are going to be breaking down a lot of what we expect out of these divisions. I think we're going to start... A rec wanted to start with the, 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 the dog dump divisions first, like the terrible divisions first. Um, so the South... So the South. <laughs> yes, exactly the South. <laughs> so um, so we might be hitting those first and working our way up, but we'll see. Either way, we're going to be breaking down divisions and what we expect, maybe what we think will happen. Um, and maybe we, I don't know, maybe we could fit in our division previews. It's hard with like so many, uh, we have, what, 30 days, 31 days left. So I don't know. Either way, we'll just preview.